right welcome back to the next part of the series and now we are almost approaching the end of this very long chapter and in this part we are going to discuss nuclear fission which is a type of nuclear reaction now this has much less to do with the actual process of radioactivity it's just a part of the chapter where you're going to learn about two different types of nuclear reactions so one of them is nuclear fission and what happens in fission is that there is a heavy nucleus and it will split into two smaller nuclei and in this type of reaction when this splitting takes place a lot of energy is also released and you can witness this energy in the form of the speed of these particles so these will be moving at quite high speeds when they are being split and this coil this particular original parent nucleus will recoil as well so this one is called the parent nucleus and these two are called the daughter nuclei in this reaction now in this fission process or this fission process is usually uh, used by humans and we have learned to control it or use it for some good things and for some bad things so one of the first and very important use of nuclear fission which is nuclear power plants so you can produce electricity electrical energy using nuclear power plants and another use is atomic bombs which are quite devastating and can destroy entire cities in a matter of minutes so we're going to learn how fission takes place inside a power plant so here is an example of a fission reaction that takes place in nuclear power plants now what we have is a slow moving uh, neutron right we have a slow moving neutron and it is absorbed it is made to absorb by a uranium 235 nucleus so you take a neutron and you basically uh, bombard it towards the uranium uh, core and the uranium 235 on its own it's quite stable but when this neutrons become becomes embedded in the uranium nucleus the uranium becomes unstable and then it undergoes nuclear fission and what it does it splits into these two nuclei which are in this case barium 141 and krypton 92 now you are not required to remember these names these are this is just one example of a nuclear fission reaction what you are required to know is that splitting of the heavy nucleus will take place into two more nucleus two more nuclei but for names and everything you don't need to remember however it is uh, useful to know or it is important to n remember that uranium is the fuel that is being used uh, uh, in the nuclear power plants for these nuclear fission reaction so you must remember the name uranium that this is uh, how the reaction is started a neutron is absorbed by uranium and then it can split into two different uh, daughter nuclei for these you don't need to remember names because this is just one example and there uh, when it splits it can also split into two other types of elements as well anyways so while the splitting takes place there's actually three neutrons as well uh, that um, that are emitted by the uranium nucleus and if you make an equation of this reaction everything will actually balance out so you can count the proton number 92 plus 0 um, on the bottom and then you can add the proton number 36 and 56 and 0 0 0 for each neutron and you will see that it will balance out and then you can see that 1 plus 235 uh, which is the mass number before the reaction should turn out to be equal to 141 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and 92 so the product of this reaction is two nuclei uh, two smaller nuclei and three neutrons now the problem with these three neutrons is that these three neutrons are now moving freely and they will bump into more uranium atoms that are present 
uh, as part of the fuel in the nuclear power plant. So these neutrons go on and hit more uranium nuclei and then they also undergo fission. So for example, this neutron goes and hits another uranium nucleus and it splits and there's energy produced and then there's more neutrons produced. And then this one goes and again the same thing happens and then third one and then again the same thing happens. So all of a sudden, we now have a lot of neutrons and each of these neutrons here as well will go on and hit other uranium atoms and produce and then they will undergo even more fission. So this rate of reaction will get out of control real quick because the rate of reaction rises exponentially and this is what we basically call a chain reaction. It's called a chain reaction and on its own it's actually very uncontrolled and a huge amount of energy will be released in a matter of seconds which can lead to an explosion or anything disastrous and the whole reactor in the power plant can basically just explode. So the uncontrolled version of this reaction which uses slightly different elements uh, but uh, that is the uncontrolled version is your atomic bombs you can think of it like that but in nuclear power plants we need this reaction to be controlled we can't let this happen uh, which the diagram is showing because then the nuclear uh, the nuclear power plant will just explode and it will be of no use it will just be a disaster so how do you control this well, let's take a look at the diagram of the nuclear reactor. Now, this is a, a very oversimplified diagram, but inside the nuclear reactor, you have these golden cores, and these, these cores here are your fuel, and they are definitely made of uranium. So your fuel is the uranium, right? Then you have graphite used as the moderator so in this entire uh, reactor everything between the rods is mostly graphite and graphite is being used as a moderator so basically what graphite does is that those neutrons that are emitted are slowed down by the graphite because if the neutrons are going too fast then uranium will not really absorb them and the reaction will basically just fizzle out and it will not really take place so graphite right here is actually helping the reaction uh, and it, it helps to continue the chain reaction uh, because it works as the moderator between those neutrons and those uraniums. It helps those neutrons get absorbed by uranium by slowing them down. What else do we have? So the actual controlling comes from these control rods and these control rods right here you can see that they fit right in between these uranium uh, reactor cores and these are made of either boron or cadmium so uh, th the good thing about these materials is that they can absorb these neutrons as well but without you know leading to a chain reaction or anything they just absorb the neutrons so what happens if they are absorbing the neutrons as well then there is less neutrons that are available to be absorbed by the uranium so how do we use these rods is we lower them into the reactor so if these rods are moved in between the reactor cores then they will absorb more and more uh, neutrons in between these cores and there will be less neutrons available and the rate of reaction can be slowed down right but if you move these rods up up if they are raised and if they're lifted up then obviously they will not absorb so many neutrons and the rate of reaction can be sped up. So these control rods are used to control the rate of reaction. If you want to speed it up, you can raise them, take them out of the reactor, and if you want to slow down the reaction, you will lower them and move them in between those reactor cores in order to absorb more and more neutrons. And this is how you basically control the reaction um, and the amount of energy that is produced can be uh, controlled. Now, the whole thing is encased in steel uh, pressure vessel so everything is made out of very strong materials because all that heat that is being produced from the fusion uh, from the fission reaction needs to be contained and all the radioactive 
waste that is being produced uh, the the react uh, you know the products of the reactions if you go back and remember the products that were produced by uranium the splitting of the uranium they were krypton and barium now these products themselves are radioactive sometimes so they undergo radioactive decay as well and what happens is now you have these alpha beta and gamma radiations present in the reactor and you can't let them just escape into the environment so we have thick steel and concrete walls all around the reactor so that the radioactive uh, emissions alpha beta and gamma radiations cannot escape into the environment because then they can harm the people living nearby or even people who are live uh, live hundreds of kilometers away so the process of the nuclear power plant can be mapped into a block diagram so first of all you have the nuclear reactor and what takes place inside the nuclear reactor well fission takes place and then what is produced as a result of fission you have thermal energy which is being produced in the nuclear reactor a lot of heat that heat is basically directed towards a boiler and the boiler just contains a lot of water which is turned into steam using that heat so that steam is at high pressure and that steam uh, is directed towards turbines which turn and start to rotate very fast because of that pressurized steam and those turbines are connected to generators so as the turbines rotate the generators also start to rotate and those generators then produced electrical energy which can be then transmitted to its consumers all right i will see you in the next part this is it for this video <laughs>